All right, let's do this. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Dark Elevation and AEW Dark. You're getting a double review this week because while last night's AEW Dark Elevation was fine, it was just a few matches and the rest was interview footage, so I figured I would just include it with this one. Two shows, Human Centipede, together in one video and presented to you all. Let me know your thoughts on these shows in the comments, please. So, Elevation is, of course, from Arthur Ashe Stadium, and I gotta say that I really do hope that AEW will run the occasional stadium show, you know, maybe a couple of year, because this was a great atmosphere. It reminded me of those nights when they ran them from those big venues and it was just really really nice the crowd was electric dun, 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 and even though i had my issues with rampage grand slam there was still some good stuff and dynamite grand slam may end up being my favorite uh, episode of wrestling television all year because even with the flaws it was really goddamn good and that stadium atmosphere was really fucking incredible so shivani eddie kingston and mark henry on commentary mark henry works better in a three-man booth when Chris, uh, old man, screams at clouds, Jericho is not on commentary. He does not need to be on commentary anymore. It was funny at first. It isn't anymore. So the crowd was up. Thunder Rosa. Everybody's up for Thunder Rosa. That I found. I saw that going a lot better in my head. But I love Thunder Rosa. One of my favorite wrestlers of the last few years. My favorite wrestler of this year. She's taken on Kayla Sparks. I believe was her name. Uh, the crowd was up for Rosa, and uh, Kayla, you know, got in some shots, but. Uh, commentary does knock Shivani for mentioning Britt because they're trying to build up, uh, you know, Adam Cole, baby, versus Tony Shivani. That'll put butts in seats. And we get drop kick in the ropes. Ouch. Fire Thunder Driver, one, two, three. Silver and Reynolds, Angels, and Allen, five, Angels, and ten. Take on TJ Crawford, Eric James, Kevin uh, Tibbs, and Dean Alexander. The crowd cheered the Dark Order, and they glom these guys, and the full Nelson for the win. And then Paul White beat up CPA, VSK, and RSP. So many goddamn letterings here. <clears throat> and the gun club uh, shows up on the stage because we need to see Billy Gunn versus Paul White in 2021 when we didn't really need to see them team up in 2001. So anyway, late stage Andre squash here, and these chops kept going. It should have been a squash, but it kept going. And I'm glad that Paul White's getting a chance to wrestle a little bit, but... Oh boy, KO punch, double choke slam, one, two, three. There you go. Now for the promos. <clears throat> Britt uh, is happy about beating uh, Ruby. She says it's back to the DMD era. MJF says this place is a rat infested um, you know, dump and talks about how he'll be in his real hometown of Queens. Or no, wait. They'd be in his real home. It's some Wherever they're going to be next week. I don't exactly remember. I think they're actually in Queens. Pillman Jr., uh, how he beat Pillman Jr., and somebody stop me. Somebody stop me. And then without this company, uh, without me, this company ain't shit. And then the only three layers that matter in AEW are MJF. This is the kind of shit that I love from MJF. Brian Danielson uh, talks about how, you know, he didn't come in to just start slow. He wanted to come in hot and he felt the magic. It was really nice to go out there and just, you know, tear the house down, which he, which him and Omega did. They tore the fucking house down. One of my favorite matches of the year, 100%. Um, and then Kingston... Kingston's talking, he's putting over Homicide because they have a long-time friendship. Pillman Jr. talks about, you know, the uh, venue and everything. Santana and Ortiz talk about how they've had to rise up, you know, from <clears throat> where they were in wrestling. And then Bowens and Caster talk about the show and then various other interviews and everything. And then, um, oh no, we get a rap from uh, the acclaimed. And then Tony Khan gets called out. And Tony Khan comes out and there's some rapper that comes out that I can catch the name of Lulu DeBerth, I think was the name. I'm Tony Khan. I'm here to stay. I'll uh, suspend the acclaim for another 30 days. And then something about you're going to uh, have to face the Varsity Blondes. Oh, boy. And then Paul White talks about how why he came to AEW and stuff like that. And let's just move on to AEW Dark. So, yeah, Elevation was fine. But, again, see, it really wasn't worth, you know, reviewing in one video. Marvez is interviewing Santana Garrett. Hopefully she left those flags that she had on her boat from that video, and you know what video I'm fucking talking about, dumbass bitch. Um, hopefully she left those at home, or hopefully she pulled her head out of her goddamn ass. Diamante confronts her and says, she calls her fresh meat and says, why don't we have a match next week? And then they have a shovey match. Thunder Rosa takes on Nikita Knight, who apparently is in her first professional wrestling match. And you know what? Good. Nikita Knight has a good look. Thunder Rosa can work with uh, pretty much anybody and get a great match out of them, unless your name is Ivelisse. By the way, hopefully Ivelisse maybe learns that she probably shouldn't be so goddamn unprofessional and probably should learn that she's just Lee. She ain't, you know, the fabulous Moolah. I mean, even the fabulous Moolah did, shouldn't have done what she did. But anyway, uh, Nikita did actually do some good stuff. She has some good poise. I'd like to see more of what she can do. Dropkick in the corner by Rosa and then the necktie for the win. 
And then Private Party took on JDX and Carly Bravo. And this actually wasn't bad. Private Party was a little less goofy here, which I'm fine with. Since Matt Hardy wasn't out there, maybe that's why I enjoyed them more. Um, Bravo and JDX got in some good shots and could be a nice team that they could team up here here and there, especially at these Universal Studios shows. Um, Gin and Juice, one, two, three. Not a bad match. And then Kira Hogan took on Layla Gray. I love seeing Layla Gray on my television screen because I was impressed when I first saw her during the pandemic era of AEW, you know, Dark Elevation and Dark. And she has a good presence. She's improved. Kira Hogan, she's got some fire to her, and this was fine. Um, she showed some attitude and fire, uh, Layla did. Kira did hit a drop kick in the corner and then a roundhouse kick, one, two, three. But good. Showcase Layla Gray a little bit more. Hopefully she's on some of these Universal Studio tapings. And Kira Hogan, I can see why people praise her. Ten uh, versus Brandon Gore. That is a great last name, by the way. Brandon Gore just sounds like somebody that would have been an 80s slasher. Like, you know, some knockoff thing. Maybe from New Line Cinema in the early 90s. So, um, it was a squash and a full Nelson for the win. Wasn't bad, though. And then Jake St. Patrick, not Jake from State Farm. And Ryzen took on uh, Cesar Bononi and Adrian Jowd. And Bononi botched a backbreaker. My God, Jowd really needs help. Now, I will say that Jowd teaming with him is better than the wingmen because I don't think Benoni belongs there. But whatever. Uh, twist slam, one, two, three. I, it just, I think Benoni's as good as he's going to get. Jowd has some good talent. Uh, Lance Archer took on Arjun Singh. And I'm going to quote, um, they, they had a, well, because Lance threw him down, you know, from the stage and everything and beat him up <clears throat> and beat him up outside the ring before the bell actually rang, and I'm just going to quote Roddy Piper about his match with Larry the Axe. The bell rang, and then the bell rang. Blackout, one, two, three. I love Lance Archer. One of my favorite wrestlers of the year, easily. Been one of my favorites for a while, especially seeing how he came back from, you know, having major back surgery and did really good shit in New Japan and has done, despite some of the weird shit that's been going on in AEW, he's done really good shit, um, you know, as far as, like, just staying over. And I love seeing him squash, guys. It's just funny. So, anyway, uh, we get Ricky Starks with Hook! Versus uh, Darius Lockhart. I'm not sure I've seen Darius Lockhart before. If I have, it's been in multi-man matches. Hopefully, we get to see this Darius Lockhart a lot more. Suggest some Darius Lockhart matches that I should watch that maybe are available on YouTube. Because if this is what he can do in front of a Universal Studios crowd, I want to see what else this guy can do. Starks is tremendous. Tremendous promo. Tremendous wrestler. This was fantastic. Really good stuff. Now, yes, it was not gonna, it's not going to exactly set the world on fire. Like, you could put this on Dynamite and it actually would have been just fine. And it's not like this would have meant something that I'm going to remember beyond maybe this review. But as far as something that I enjoyed, this stood out because Darius is really good on the mat. Starks is really good as far as, like, you know, what he can do. <clears throat> and Stark got, um, he, you know, there was a nice hammerlock variation that uh, Darius did. Starks got, you know, fired up and everything um, and beat him down for a while. And then Lockhart fired up. He had a nice drop kick and still got, you know, still got a... Uh, Still got, you know, was battling a knee issue because Starks drop kicked his knee earlier. Hit a nice cross body for two. But sudden spear. Starks hits a beautiful spear. One, two, three. Uno and Grayson took on Adrian Alanis and uh, Liam Gray. Okay, mostly a squash. Uno pins uh, Adrian, I think. That's all I got to say about that. J-U-L-A-A. J-U-L-A-A. Hard. Uh, took on Rekka Tahaka. Um, and Julia has something but needs more time. Rekka, yeah, she's fine. Um, and it was a splash and a split leg bulldog, one, two, three. And then Bear Country took on J uh, Jameson Ryan and Brick Aldridge. I think that uh, Boulder hurt his knee, so Bronson had to take over. Hopefully Boulder's all right, and hopefully he just tweaked it. He just came back from an injury. Um, they're a good team. I just hope the injury bug hasn't bit him because, unfortunately, sometimes wrestling and any sport, when the injury bug bites you, sometimes it doesn't let go. Um... Uh, and Bronson used a cannonball in the corner. Uh, the move, the cannonball, not actual cannonball. That would have been dangerous. And got the pin one, two, three. Again, hopefully uh, Boulder is going to be all right. QT and Solo with Camarado took on Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. Matt is great. Dante is great. I don't give a shit about this factory stuff. And we get late. Uh, we get stage dive by both QT bomb for two, and then kicks a plenty of moonsault one, two, three. There you go. That's it for that. Those are two shows done in under 10 minutes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.